Hello everybody and welcome to another Transformers third party review. In today's video I'm taking a look at my very first figure from Transformission. This is their powertrain. It is basically an IDW inspired masterpiece size version of Menasaur. I've seen a lot of the guys getting all of the limbs for him and I saw it on Oh My Primus and I wanted it. <laughs> it actually arrived uh, pre-convention. I've just been to the TF Nation convention and I actually picked up the Generation Toys IDW Optimus. Uh, Generation Toys and Transformation, they are the brother and sister company, uh, which used to be Warbatron. So there you go, now you know. Uh, this is really quite heavy and uh, actually a lot more so than what I was expecting. Beautiful artwork on the front there. We've got some schematics and a scratch on there where I've not been looking after the box, uh, but it arrived really safe and sound. Uh, can't fault Omar Primus at all. Great, great service comes packaged in this ridiculously solid box with foam padding and instructions all in tow. And here he is out of his foam prison. Accessory wise, he has the gun separate in the box. And he also comes with the ring face and two batteries as well. Everything else is kind of within the trailer and folded all away. And this is how he comes straight out of the package. Now he's not perfect. He's very nice, but he's not perfect. Uh, you have to really mess around with some of these tabs to get all of the wheels to touch the ground. Uh, it does roll. These are rubber tires as well. And he looks gorgeous. That's a really, nice looking truck mode. Now I never really had any uh, plans to start an MP IDW shelf, <laughs> but I saw a few people do comparisons between the MP10 mold and powertrain and the size look literally blew me away. All I could think about was like the key to Vector Sigma where you had Prime and Motor Master, kind of just such a similar design. Uh, obviously you have the extended kind of roof cab section at the top here, but that looks absolutely incredible. Considering this guy has the IDW design in his robot modes and in his combined form, to have an alt mode that looks this good is incredible. I've got nothing but admiration for the designer. And for those of you wondering, it's around 14 inches. It's about 38 centimeters. Now, plastic wise, if you've ever had a Warbatron or a Generation toy figure, the plastic is pretty much identical. It's good. It's not up there with fans toys. It's different consistency, really. They're making a very different style of figure. Now, the downsides being you can obviously see all of this panel sections here where it's all a jigsaw to hold everything in place yet the actual cab itself is extremely well hidden kind of incorporated it all into the grooves of the cab and it works exceptionally well my front grille doesn't really want to stay together quite as nicely as it should but uh, that's quite a small price to pay considering. Unfortunately, I don't own any more of the Stunticons in this series. So here he is with the BB-7 version of Sideswipe just to give you an idea of how the Masterpiece scale does work with these figures in alt mode. And it really does. They look exceptionally good. Right, now to get Motormaster transformed up. This section here is actually separate to this piece here. And there are several tabs along here. Basically, these tabs flip there. Uh, there's one here, and there's two on top, and there's one on this side. We just flip those out, and this whole piece here comes away from this section here. And already we can see a very nice looking sword. So firstly, let's concentrate on this front cab section. This side piece flips up and over. This piece here lifts up 
and you want to just flip it back on its double hinge. Holding onto this rear piece, you want to bring the front cab down. This top piece here is a little bit fiddly, but you have to get your nails in behind and just bring this piece down. That reveals the motor master head and then bring this piece up and over again. And that's just gonna tab in, closing off the front of the chest. Pull the Menasaur head away from these tab sections on top. Pull down this hinge arm section and then untabbing this piece from the top, bring this arm all the way out to this angle. Lift the head upwards, bring the crotch piece section down. This piece here just comes untabbed and push this piece here out to the front and then bring the head all the way down pushing this completely into the crevice and then folding this piece upwards so it sits flush against this back piece here bring the arms down to the side lift these cannons up close this piece off bring this piece in and then bring this piece over unfolding this piece here we can then bring this up and there's these two tab sections in there they are just going to tab in holding that back piece into place bring these wheels downwards bring these wheels around to the back and tab those in these launchers are on a slider you want to slide slider all the way down and then collapse this section backwards so that the launchers sit nicely either side of the head these arm panels slide outwards and downwards and then you can flip this piece up and over this panel just flips downwards and we can flip the fists outwards and then close that forearm section back off. Grabbing the top of the cab, just pull that apart and then collapse the tabs on the inside downwards. Compress the smoke stacks and untab the gas tanks. Roll this piece down, there's a tab on here that's going to push in and tab inwards and this top piece section is going to untab that's going to lift up and there's a tab on the back here and that's just going to tab in and then this piece here is going to compress downwards like so move this purple tab upwards bring this side piece outwards push this front piece down and that's going to just collapse into this bay here the leg can now come up all the way up to the top here and just coming to the inside of the leg we've got two holes and they're just going to tally up and tab in securely. Pull this front piece downwards, compress this inwards, move the tire to the upwards position and bring this down, close off the back of the leg and there's a small tab just inside the gas tank. Flip this up and you're going to bend this around and as you can see there, there's a tab on the back and they just tab into the back of the foot. His gun can actually be stored underneath the trailer like this, but we're gonna use this for his robot mode. And we're just going to flip this back piece upwards and pull out this section as well. Flip these tab pieces upwards, open up these side sections, lift up these tabs, and these pieces here should just slide outwards. And with those pieces detached, all of these now can just come apart, the sword, etc. Everything now separates. Flatten all of these pieces down. Bring the sword back inwards, and that's going to sit in here. Grab the cannon sections, bend this piece around, flip this outwards, lift this hinge up, compress this, flip and compress, and then rock this down and compress that inwards. Separate these two sections. By giving them a very forceful tug, these are really quite stiff inside these. Over time, they will loosen up a bit, but they are really, really quite stiff. Fold this piece downwards. This section here needs to rotate. So this flap is facing inwards. Just rotate that on that hinge. This piece here can now rotate. This top piece comes up 
and rotate again. And then if you look here, we have this hole here, this hole here, and these two tabs. They're just going to come down and applying pressure, just push those into place. The sides can now plug in on here. And these gun sections can just tab in on there. Grab the gun, place this section down, bring this piece down, and there we go. He should now be able to hold this, split the hilt of the sword and bend these pieces upwards. This sword should now be able to fit in his hand. You can then take the bottom of the trailer, bring this down, bring this inside like so. These pieces rotate downwards. And this rotates down like that. And to put the shield on, you need to rock this piece backwards, have the hand upwards like so, and then we can tab this into the groove of the hand and then close the fist back off. And here we have him fully transformed up into his robot mode. And he looks amazing, doesn't he? There was a lot of folding involved and uh, it was definitely a lot more intricate than what I was expecting. But the overall look and feel of him uh, is very, impressive he is pretty much comic book accurate and i for the life of me could not figure out how on earth they were going to transform those feet but it worked and it worked exceptionally well getting a nice and close that's a really good head sculpt very close likeness of his idw self fantastic range as well you've got a rotation on there as well as a hinge up and down so we can look down quite nicely and up pretty much to a ridiculous height the shoulders really nice and boxy love these big rocket launchers mounted either side of the head didn't think i was going to but i actually do uh, the shoulders are on a friction joint move the shield out of the way i can go up and down come round on again on a friction joint maybe would have liked some ratchets in there friction joint on the upper bicep very soft ratchet on the elbow rotation on the wrist the fingers are all pinned although the trigger finger is separate and the thumb is ball mounted the waist can rotate quite nicely we do not have any abdominal crunch the hip skirts can come forwards allowing for a friction joint going forwards, backwards, really nice strong ratchet going out to the side. There is a strange upper thigh bend inwards. I'm assuming that's something to do with the articulation for the combined mode. And the feet can come forwards and backwards and we can tilt side to side. So we've got some really nice motion and this guy can get an incredibly nice strong wide stance which I must admit comes in very handy when you're wielding a huge sword. I was slightly curious originally when we saw the plans for this figure as to what they were going to do with the rest of the trailer. Um, we do have these nice little handles at the back here so the rest of the Stunticons can use it as a battle station which really does make a huge nod to the original toy uh, back in Generation 1 where every part of the Scrabble City teams kind of had this hidden base mode that their uh, bots like hotspot and they all had kind of this additional base mode and this really does pay homage to that very nicely For those of you wondering wow. about his scale here he is alongside mp10 uh, he's gone from being a very similar size in that alt mode to a smidge taller and actually in my opinion uh, better proportion yes he's got the flaps over his arm but i love the way they've got those legs going and he, there's just something about him he looks so much better in hand than he does on the screen or in photo shoots it's it's just something about this guy which is so much fun to mess around with
He now stands uh, just shy of 11 inches. It's about 10 and a half, which is about 27 centimeters from the top of his rockets to the base of his foot and weighs in at 523 grams. That's 18.44 ounces. That's nothing to be ashamed of. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. I will be covering the combined mode in a completely separate video. There's just too much involved. I uh, honestly cannot wait to get the other members of this team. It is a gorgeous figure. Uh, I really didn't think I was gonna like it as much as I do. There's just something super fun about him. Everybody said to me, Ben, you need to get it. You're really gonna like it. And yes, yes, I do. Um, I'm gonna have to make some more space, aren't I? If I'm gonna start having Masterpiece IDW figures. Uh, once again, I've included a link in the description below as to where you can purchase this over at Oh My Primus. And until next time, from, from myself and the mighty powertrain, uh, goodbye.